almost three years after peace negotiations started between FARC rebels and the Colombian government, an historic step is expected to be taken in the next few hours. The Colombian leftist FARC rebels and the government will apparently be signing an agreement regarding justice and reparations for the victims of the more than five decades old conflict. Out of the five points under discussion, the parties have reached agreements on rural reform and political participation to seek peace and a solution to illicit drugs. The expected agreement on justice would define who can be considered victims and how those responsible would be sanctioned. President Juan Manuel Santos announced he would be traveling to Havana today in an attempt to speed up the peace process. And we've got Natalia Margarita joining us now live from Bogota with the latest on these developments in the peace process. Hi, Natalia. First of all, the announcement of the agreement between the Colombian government and the FARC was tweeted yesterday by human rights activist Piedad uh, Cordoba. Uh, and President Santos says that he is on his way to Havana to, to uh, and the peace uh, deal is close. Do you think we can expect an announcement today or is there more to be done? Definitely. In fact, that's very much on the issue of justice and victims week and is expected to be released today during a historic meeting between Colombia's President Juan Manuel Santos and the FARC maximum leader, Elias Timochenko. Also, Cuban President Raul Castro, who, according to our agency, quoting FARC sources, is going to be... This announcement is expected to be released at 5 in the afternoon Cuban time, meaning 4 in the afternoon Colombian time. Uh, it is important to clarify that maximum leader of the FARC, uh, Elias Timochenko, is not part of the FARC peace delegation, and he has already been confirmed to be there in Havana waiting uh, to release, together with President Juan Manuel Santos, this important announcement on an agreement on justice and victims. Uh, as you said before, President Santos himself has confirmed uh, in his official Twitter account that he's traveling today to Cuba, too, for what he called a key meeting. It is important to mention also, Regan, that this will be the first time President Santos travels to Cuba since the peace process, uh, Colombia's peace process began back in 2012. So this is indeed a very good sign now and a historic day, not just for the peace process, but for the country. Um, why this agreement is so important? Well, it is important because justice and victims uh, most complex, sensitive, and difficult point of the negotiation agenda, of that five-point negotiation agenda. Uh, during the course of the first year, year negotiation, the FARC and the government managed to uh, agree on the three points that you also mentioned, that are rural reform, uh, secondly, political participation for the FARC, and third, uh, the, the end to illegal drug trade. But this uh, fourth point of victims and justice, they have been discussing it uh, for more than one year, uh, exactly since June last year. So the fact that we're finally having an agreement on that, it's a very good, uh, good signal for this peace process. And as I said before, not just for the peace process, but for the country and its millions of victims of these more than five decades of armed conflict regions. Natalia, one point on the justice for the victims has often been described as the most challenging issue in the whole peace talks. Can you explain what it involves? Well, it basically involves, in the first place, uh, victim compensation. Not uh, all victims uh, of Colombian uh, Colombia's armed conflict have, uh, the, have the same approach to what compensation means. So you have, on the one side, some victims that say that the best way to be compensated is uh, with the guarantees of no repetition. Others say that they want to see their perpetrators in jail. So it's very the, the, the issue of the victims and how they see their own compensation uh, led us to the issue of justice. And then in the same issue of justice is how 
you're gonna you're gonna hold accountable the perpetrators. And then this at the same time brings you to the point that not just FARC ha are are the actors of this armed conflict, but you have the state crimes, but you have paramilitarism in Colombia. So how you're gonna hold all different actors involved accountable and how you're going to face a transitional justice uh, process because we need to remember that the FARC are in a peace process, in a surrender process as their extreme uh, right-wing parties have been claiming here, have been pretending here. So it basically it has to do like how you're going to hold accountable the perpetrators and which are, are going to be... Uh, hold them accountable that uh, for sure uh, alternative um, alternative punishments uh, need to be considered among these because you cannot be, pretend to have a peace process then to be put into jail so it's, it's very very much complex uh, it also implies as I said before the issue uh, not just of justice but of victim compensation and also of truth Many thanks, Natalia. Hopefully we can touch base with you another time. Thanks for your perspective. Back to you, Regan. Have a good day.